Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 11th and the 18th of August 2018. I'm filming my two next videos, this one and the next week, here simply because I have a power failure in my house so you get to enjoy a place called Seven Mills in Israel. It's by the bank of the river. Let me turn this around a minute. Give you a 360. Yeah. So it's a beautiful place. And I'm sitting here so you can enjoy the sound of the water while I'm doing this. We are opening this week up with an eclipse partial solar eclipse in 18 Leo Aquarius. So if you have personal planets or points in your chart that are in the vicinity of these points or in the vicinity of 18 degrees Scorpio or Taurus, you'll be more affected by this eclipse. This eclipse has a lot of energy around it regarding communication, regarding the way we state ourselves and say things. There's a lot of honor and prestige involved and sometimes a degree of dramatization that is unnecessary regarding those issues. We could be too dramatic over things and fussy over things that should be done right and should be done honorably and so on and so forth while we are actually the ones acting childishly or acting emotionally. And we all need to watch that, watch our pride uh, uh, during this time. So, let's go down to this week. On the 11th, we have the solar eclipse. It's a Saturday. It's a day to watch out for indulgence. It's a day to watch out from taking in too much or asking for too much. It's a day to be less extravagant, more tactful, more discreet. Um, there's a lot about tactfulness and discretion in the sky right now. And by the way, this eclipse is going to be seen only over most northern parts of Europe and northeastern Asia. Sunday the 12th, we're having a grand trine in the sky. The moon, Saturn and Uranus are giving us a beautiful earth trine. It's a very practical time. It's a great day to take things forward regarding your work, your career, your health. Everything that needs maintenance, everything that needs perfection, everything that needs attention to details is good on that day. If you do have time during the nighttime, go outside, see the Perseids meteor shower. It's one of the nicest meteor showers of the year, about 60 meteors per hour. It comes from the constellation Perseus, but you can see it all over the sky, especially after midnight. And since the moon is going to be basically almost uh, uh, no moon it's a very new moon so you will you'll be able to see the comets very brightly at that and it picks around the 12th and the 13th so monday the 13th mars retrograde moves back into capricorn i'm really really aching for this Mars cycle to progress already but this is the final stages of its retrograde movement when it comes to the 28th degree of Capricorn it's going to station direct and move back forward in this time in Capricorn again we're talking about a lot of issues of maturation a lot of issues of taking responsibility of working within the frame of reality within the rules that have been laid down to us by this world addressing environmental needs and addressing existential needs and doing that in a fashion that will be stable consistent and 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 uh, and done right um, there's something very hard about saturn in that sense and if we are to move forward saturn says that's how we need to move forward. And if it's not so, you will be feeling the brakes. You will be feeling the Saturn slowing you down, saying, hey, this isn't ready yet. 
this isn't addressing reality the way it should yet. Uh, other than that, it could be a little forgetful, the 13th. It could be a little discombobulated. Um, it could be a little lazy. And a very sensitive day at that. Please look for your inner strength on the 13th. Don't expect uh, support from people around you. On the 14th, it's a Tuesday, very energetic morning. And remember, the times I give are in Central European time. If you're living in the States, take it about 10 hours to 8 hours back, whether you're in the East or West Coast. And if you are in the Pacific, it's about 10 hours ahead. So, um, Thursday morning, I'm sorry. Tuesday morning, the 14th, very energetic time. Great time for physical work. Great time for any physical activity. Great time to progress things that you've been, uh, that've been dormant for a while. Um, noon time is a little stressful. We could be a little unsure of ourselves or too judgmental, but the night time is wonderful for love wonderful for relationships and satisfaction the 15th Wednesday good day for communication as long as you're not too dramatic and obsessive about your ideas we can communicate them easily but we can become too emotional attached to them and not flexible enough so watch that the 16th especially in the morning could be a morning that is agitated Watch your temper. Also in the afternoon, do try new things. Do go out of the ordinary, out of your routine. It would help you progress things in a strategic manner as well. You can address problems at work on that day with a deep, different approach to things. The 17th is a Friday. Again, watch your communication and watch how you say things. Indiscretion again comes up to the table. Uh, tactfulness and being uh, professional about things and considerate about things and sensitive comes up to the table. It is a great day to go outside. It is a great day to enjoy yourself, make an adventure of that day, um, go on a vacation or study. A lot of strength during the night as well and a lot of sexuality there's a grand shrine on that day that is, 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 is all around this week and next week between Juno and Ceres and Pluto and Juno is in charge of everything we are faithful or should be faithful to in our life because it provides sustenance and stability Ceres is what we give out of sheer love to this world and Pluto is the transformation so there could be transformation Plutonic transformation, unnecess not necessarily a comfortable one, but one that provides growth uh, with the things that we give out to the ones that we are faithful to, or that the ones that we are faithful to give out to us. The balance can change. If you want to see Venus in the sky, Friday the 17th, which is Friday is Venus's day, it's Freya's day, is going to be an amazing time to see Venus. Uh, just after sunset, look for the brightest star over the horizon. It's going to be Venus. It's in its greatest western elongation from the sun, so it's very bright. About 46 degrees, 45.9. And Saturday, watch out be for the differences that can awaken between males and females and between the male and feminine sides within you, between your needs and between your wants, between your entrepreneurship and initiative and your feeling of vulnerability, between your intuition and your sensibility or logic, you know. Um, but other than that, it's a good day for communication. It's a good day for physical activities. It could be a day that we can enjoy adventure a lot or being outside of nature a lot or just vacationing or studying things that we are interested in. Um, just be mindful of that ego, emotional connection on that day. So I'm gonna be on a cruise for the next 10 days, 
for Norway. I'm going to make the next video just after this one. So excuse the, the same scenery and uh, probably shirt. And I'm going to come back around the 21st. I'm going to be available on WhatsApp if you need me from time to time. And of course, I would love your comments, likes and shares on this video. They expose these videos to more people. And if you need a private consultation or you want to study evolutionary astrology, as I said, we are setting up a new group in English. You can study with me from wherever you are around the world. Just contact me. I want to thank you for listening. Have a beautiful week. This is Boaz Fighter. Goodbye.